joining us, just want to get you up to speed as far as people who have been killed because of these storms. In Gloucester County, the number right now stands at three confirmed deaths. Uh, in Bertie County, North Carolina, at least nine confirmed dead with at least one missing. And this number coming about two and a half hours ago. So the number may have gone up uh, since then, but our Melanie Woodrow will keep us up to date when, when they get those numbers. Uh, we also sat down and chat with, uh, chatted with the captain of the Deltaville Fire Department. So let's see what he has to say. What were you out here when the storm hit? I was. I live a couple miles up the road, and uh, I responded. We had another alarm activation call. I'd responded to, and when the multiple 911 calls came into the center, and uh, it was pretty obvious we had significant damage down here based on the calls we had gotten, and then uh, I responded down here to the firehouse, and we took units from there, and, and were pretty amazed at what we saw. Where do you even begin to start, I mean, to, to repair this and to fix this? Um, first, we had to start getting the arteries, the major arteries, Route 33, opened up because Route 33 was impassable to any of the emergency vehicles. And when we uh, opened Route 33 up, by then it was dark. The call came in around 7.20. Um, we were probably close to 9 o'clock before we could actually get down into some of the subdivisions to get to, to check. Um, thankfully, uh, due to the time of year, it wasn't that nice of a weekend. A lot of these areas were weekend homes, so um, people weren't in a large majority of the houses. Had this been in July, it would have been a different story. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? I mean, just about... Really good teamwork and response from the other um, companies, the fire companies within our county, uh, Urbana, Waterview, and Hartfield, uh, and uh, Lower Middlesex Volunteer Rescue Squad as well. Um, all got together and worked really well, and uh, they, they responded quick. We had a lot of help. Um, got here quick. They were able to assist us in getting these roads opened up and getting down to find that uh, we didn't have as many injuries as we thought we were going to have. we got dog teams. We're going to search tomorrow a lot of the uh, areas that we've been in tonight um, to search rubble piles and stuff and make sure we don't have any victims unaccounted for. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Well, I, oh wait. When you, you said any victims on account of it, have you heard? Is there any word that anyone's missing at this point? We've had called. We've got uh, several people that have called the 911 center asking about loved ones that they have unable to account for. But we've gone to the houses, and some of those houses don't have any damage. So we're going to get tomorrow morning do a further search. We're hoping that those people had left town. Uh, communications were down for a while, cell phones weren't working, and a lot of these weekend homes don't have landline phones in them. So getting in touch, someone in Richmond or Fredericksburg, for instance, can't get in touch with someone at some of these houses very easily. Mm. So, Well, we actually ran into a situation where we were walking down the street, and the first time we walked by this house, we thought we heard some knocking, but then we're like, well, everything's settling. That's what we, that was what we thought. And then when we were walking back, we heard it again. And this time it really did sound like knocking and to the point where, you know, Sergeant Anaya and, and the, the people that we were out there walking with, we felt it was like we had to go knock on the doors and be like, hello, are you in there? Are you okay? And it was a very scary situation. Some people have elected to stay in their houses even though they don't have power. I think they're going to find tomorrow they're going to be out of power for several days and they're going to probably elect to, to, to leave. Uh, Middlesex County is opening a shelter at the elementary school, I believe it is, at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning for anyone that wishes to stay there. Um, we're going to have that open um, and you know, determine tomorrow whether there's a need for that or not. Uh, as I say, a lot of these houses are secondary homes to people, so they have their other primary residences to go stay in. Another thing we noticed out there was like it's a really heavy, strong smell of propane. That can't be good. No, we've had some crews out and uh, have responded to that, shutting off those tanks. And uh, we've also got boats overturned in the creeks. Uh, we've notified the Coast Guard of that, and they're going to be out in the morning to check on that, too. And that propane comment reminded me, too, yeah. with a lot of people out of electricity, they're going to be hooking up those generators, right. and we want to make sure that you are safe if you're going to use a generator because that, of course, in incidents right. like this lead, can lead to, um, to more deaths right. and, and more injuries. So if you're going to use your generator, make sure that you have a window open um, all the time because you, you need that ventilation going through. It's, and make sure that machine is outside for sure and not <clears throat> in the house with you. We do thank the captain of the Deltaville Fire Department uh, for taking some time out in what we know was 
a busy overnight time and into the day they're going door to door knocking to make sure that even though those homes were um, vacation homes likely not lived in right now just to make sure that there are no major injuries. That was lucky.